West Side Story was released to theaters this past weekend as I record this when I'm not podcasting, and it flopped badly. $100 million production budget, and it only made $10.5 million for the weekend. And it's been an ongoing trend with musicals. I'm a big mus- a big movie guy. I watched uh, 20, what is it, 19 movies since the return of movies back for the pandemic. Okay, the year before, only one. Or no, actually, I saw, what, eight because of pandemic. So first couple of months of 2020, and then I saw Tenet a little after Labor Day weekend, and that was it. And then, okay, about 45 movies in 2019. I'm pretty big about that. To make me go watch a musical, very rare. I think I've only seen Jersey Boys. was the only adapted musical to movie that I have seen. Otherwise, I've, you know, I've seen my mother watch Mamma Mia on TV. <laughs> All three of them, I think there is. Or at least two, I, I forget. So I've seen that pop up on my screen. I never watched any others. And I've never been a Broadway person. I, even though I bet you it's probably be pretty exciting or interesting to watch. If I were to watch it, you know, you know, on a stage and do the whole Broadway experience, I would imagine. But those tickets are really expensive. Anyway, here's the story with Steven Spielberg's rave reviewed remake of West Side Story. So the critics actually had a good review for it. And Rotten Tomatoes put it up really high, 95% out of a thousand plus uh, certified reviews. So there's a lot of questions right now in Hollywood about the theatrical viability of films that are not visual effects driven fantasy spectacles or new chapters in ongoing franchises. Well, look, yeah, we know that all the big blockbuster movies are normally remakes of something or adapting something to movie, right? So to go ahead and go back and take a movie that did very well in West Side Story back in 19... In 1961, yes. In that which that movie had a $6.75 million budget in 1961 and made $44 million in the box office. The idea is that in December, there are certain movies they think that they could try to pull off in December that will do really well in the box office for Christmas time. The Greatest Showman was what a great example was. Uh, it did collect $8.8 million in the first three days of domestic theaters, but it did do much better overall. It ran for six months, six months in theaters and got $437 million in worldwide ticket sales. So even though it didn't do well in December, the movie stayed out long enough because not only did the movie do well in the movie part and actually the theatrical release, but the movie soundtrack did very well as well. But for whatever reason, they made their money back. Like that was a success in all respects. But on Christmas weekend or during the Christmas month, it didn't do as well as you would think. The first three days in domestic theaters anyway. It did better overseas. In exit polls by Cinema Score, the film was given an A grade. And indicators of audience sentiment all bode well for the long run ahead through the upcoming holiday season. So, like, we're not worried about people going to the movies. I don't think anybody's really concerned about variants that are, for those that are not willing to go to the movie theaters now, then they're not going to go anyway. Because we already know that this year the box office has found a way back to get people back to the movie theaters. It's pretty obvious because we're seeing movies that have made their way back and they've done very well this year. When you look at the year domestically that they've done so far, Shang-Chi did the most of any movie this year. They had 4,300 screens and the movie made so far $224 million domestic box office, $75 million opening uh, opening weekend box office. And then when you look at the totals overall, $418 $418 million for a Marvel movie didn't do too bad. Now, out of curiosity, Eternals, $161 million in its opening first weekend. $395, which will be $161 million total so far. Almost $400 million for that. 
and that's not even like the bigger movies, but Marvel made big movies this year. Venom is also up there. Black Widow's up there. F9. But when you look at the kind of movies that did very well, they're big, bloated. Like sometimes there are a lot of sequels we saw, a lot of universes being retold, things like that. Ghostbusters Afterlife has done really well. The most recent, $120 million domestic. Dune, $106 million domestic, among other things. And, you know, to go with the route of movies like this, the thing is, I don't know if you're going to get the musicals to be something that you're going to get an audience to go see on a movie screen. I don't know if it adapts well. But we know that most of these shows, I don't know if West Side Movie's already been put out as a Broadway show. It is, isn't it? So is Dear Evan Hansen. So is, of course, Cats. So is, you know, In the Heights. I mean, among other movies that are out there. So that didn't help much. Now, I don't see that movie making any money back like it did. And I think Spider-Man, far away from, uh, away from home, is going to clean up next weekend. So for the chance that West Side Story even has a reprise, this was also a movie that was left alone by itself. Because if you look at the release schedule this year, there was nothing else that was coming out widescreen release that was really going to take on West Side Story. What? National Champions? which made $300,000 and it was widescreen release and it tanked because it was bad. It's one of those movies they should have put out next month, but they didn't. But anyway, West Side Story was by itself. There were other movies they really had out that you could look at that were really going to be standing out at this moment that were really important. When you're looking at the weekend chart, what was this competition? Encanto, which had already been out for several weeks, House of Gucci, which was in his third week, Ghostbusters Afterlife, and really, there were not any movies that even could come in the same field as West Side Story. There was no reason for this movie to have tanked, but it did. Now, some people are going to say that Ansel Elgort, one of the main characters, was caught up in sexual uh, abuse allegations, and that was going to cause some people not to go see the movie, I don't know if that was really so much the same here, but that's one of the reasons. But Hollywood's been talking about all the rags are talking about it right now. Disney and 20th Century Studios with Steven Spielberg as director. $100 million they put to this movie and it did not do well. Now, the one thing it could get is critical acclaim, but for that kind of money... It's not what they wanted. Now, the last musical that we had out there was Dear Evan Hansen, $7.4 million. And in the meantime, Dear Evan Hansen and In the Heights cost far less to make than West Side Story, even though In the Heights also did not do well in the box office either. As far as I know, if I go look for it, and see where they've been this year. Among all movies this year that have been released in 2021, it ranks, oh boy, 34th. <laughs> it got in the 3,500 screens. The movie, domestically, $29 million. And $43 million total. The budget was $55 million. <laughs> it did not make its money back. Tanked. Not good. But then Lee Mel Man Manuel Miranda, no, I'm not sure he's okay because Encanto's done very well in the box office as an animated feature. So that worked for him. And of course he has Hamilton and other things that obviously will be coming along for himself. But that's what's going on. Now, one story I took from IGN, actually among the other stories that came out there that were discussing you know, the musicals that are flopping, they made mention of For Every Chicago, Mamma Mia, or Les Miserables, that there have been other movie musicals on Broadway phenomena that did not do well. So there was Dear Evan Hansen this year. Cats from 2019. A budget of roughly $100 million, but only $75.5 million worldwide ticket sales. As of this writing, 
19% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and just really did bad and everybody was really complaining. And it was a false star cast. In the Heights, same thing. For the movie to have broken even, it needed to have grossed $200 million. Now you could say, oh, it was a simultaneous release on HBO Max could also blame the failure. Well, It did not help in any way. So you have that in the streaming era of simultaneous streaming and releasing the theaters. Did not do well. And of course, there have been others. Rock of Ages with Tom Cruise. That tanked. Rent tanked. Jersey Boys tanked. Hedwig and the Angry Inch tanked. Annie, which, by the way, why they keep trying to make Annie, I don't know. But the 2014 theatrical version of Annie tanked. Annie lied to little NBC, did not do so well. The producers in 2005, among others, failed. Now, what does this mean all in the long run? Well, it's not as if they can't do these kind of movies. But, you know, there's a lot of reasons that you might see some of these musicals. If you're going to take something that's going to be from Broadway and trying to adapt... I don't know if people really are into musicals anymore like they might have been in the past. And I don't know if when you're, people are trying to watch that on a movie screen, it doesn't adapt well. I think what you got to do is keep them in Broadway and go for that. Or what you're going to do is you just totally read. I don't even know what you do, but they keep trying because it is a mass appeal movie trying to attract women, trying to attract, you know, various demographics that are not reached by the younger demographic that watches all these cinematic universe movies, all these superhero movies. They're trying to find something to get people there. So, you know, every movie theater has movies that are catered to ethnic audiences or they have them to an older audience. There's always been that. But then the younger audience you cover, the horror audience you cover, well, the musicals have been failing. And I don't know what they're going to do with that right now, but that's a common problem, and it keeps happening. With West Side Story, the other thing, too, is that that movie did so well. It's so iconic today. And why Steven Spielberg said it was in his gestalt to go ahead and make this movie himself and see if he could go ahead and make it better. See, the other thing, too, is that when you're seeing some movies being remade or recreated, what are you going to do any different with West Side Story that, you know, if you take take a Dune or, you know, whatever, and you're trying to go and recreate with new CGI, new effects, I mean, the level of performers that you need in these movies, what they're also doing is they're taking actors and actresses that I don't know if they actually necessarily have a lot of Broadway background and trying to adapt it onto the screen. I don't know if that works either, but we're not seeing a lot of performance, you know, large-scale choreography, choreographical-type performances in movies. We haven't seen anything like that in a, in a while in the in the movie theaters. And I don't know if there's anything out there that's going to take that spot. I mean, you know what they could try to do, but I don't think they'll ever do that as high school musical. They try to make that to a feature film, but I don't think they'll ever do that. And I don't know what else you have. Like, what other... You, they, again, Dear Heaven Hansen is a big, blow-away Broadway feature... And if those movies are not working, then don't do them. Go to something else. I mean, and, and you know, I don't know if people are going to be so caught up in watching those kind of spectacles, those epic type of things that are going to be on in a movie. I just think those, the era of that's just fading away. And that's what's happening now. So it sucks for them, but they're going to have to learn because it keeps, it keeps costing money for these big movie studios to try to find movies that are going to make some big money in order to support the independent films that can be made out there or the smaller budget films they want to make. You might as well just go for the smaller budgets because to keep hemorrhaging hundreds of millions of dollars for movies like these, it's not working. The other part I'm not going to make a big deal about, but I think some people are going to probably sense about this is because you are trying to take movies with an original account and you're trying to go ahead and represent them in a new way to a new progressive audience. Listen, I'm not saying it's wrong. Remember, there's an audience that's going to catch up in all these movies when it comes to Dear Evan Hansen or when it comes to West Side Story. 
Who knows? Or in the Heights. They'll find their audiences. But to get that audience that you think is there, that's going to go ahead and pay big money to go to the theaters to watch it and make it a spectacle, they're going to probably want to watch it from home because you've made it such a thing now after pandemic to make everybody feel like more comfortable to watch movies at home because of the experience of being able to go watch over the top to buy a premium after the fact to watch it on DVD and you can get it from home and feel the same thing. You don't need the big leather couch, uh, leather chairs. You don't need the popcorn there. You could do the same experience from home. Cause really those movies also for the sound doesn't make much of a difference. I mean, the singing is what you're going to really hear the orchestration, not going to make much of a difference in a large scale Dolby stereo system that's in a movie theater. I don't think you're going to go to an RPX or IMAX and find that those movies are going to really make any difference when you watch it in a movie theater. So it's quality that's going to be a standout part. And then the other part is, is that I think there's just a, a fatigue in seeing musicals in theaters that I don't think you're going to get that kind of crowd to go to the theater to watch it. Plus, they don't market those movies really well. You do notice that they might do marketing through social media, but really you're not seeing a whole lot of ads through streaming services and a lot of ways to go and advertise and market it. I mean, what shows are you going to put that on? I mean, you don't necessarily put those type of ads for movies like that onto live sports. There's not a lot of live entertainment shows to put on. We haven't had any award shows in a while that you could also put that in. So what? Are, where else are you going to go with that? That's where it is. I will leave it there and I will talk to you next time.